What's up everyone, my name is Royal Rebel, and in this video I'm going to talk about the drop in players over the past several months in Dead by Daylight and what I think some of the game's biggest problems are right now. Before we get too far in the video, this isn't me hating on Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight is one of my favorite games and I want to see it last for as long as possible, but that doesn't mean the game isn't without its problems. And I think one of the ways that we can address some of Dead by Daylight's issues is by talking about them. Now it's no shock to anyone that the massive drop in players happened just after MMR was introduced to the game, which came out in the 5.2 patch update back in September of 2021. When Behavior created MMR, they only based skill on one thing. How many survivors escape? If you don't already know, survivors gain MMR by escaping the match and they lose it when they die. How much you gain or lose depends on the likelihood you had to escape and the order in which you die. So if a survivor who dies first will lose more ranking than the survivor who dies last. For killers, it's dependent on the number of survivors killed in a match and then the hatch has absolutely no effect on MMR. Obviously the system was flawed from the start because there are a lot more things that happen in Dead by daylight than just escaping and killing, such as the ability to escape or end chases, getting safe unhooks, flashlight saves, etc. Things that behavior already tracks as they determine the number of blood points players get. I'm not going to get too far into this as behavior did some matchmaking tests at the end of March and beginning of April and they've already published their results, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, but hopefully the solution they've come up with solves the matchmaking issue. But I think another major issue with Dead by Daylight is it's not very friendly to casual players. The game requires a lot of grinding and time to unlock a majority of the content. Looking beyond the base game, the only way players can get access to additional content is either through iridescent shards or work cell. Shards are earned through XP and leveling up your player level. Cells are the premium currency players can buy with real money. Walking through what it takes to unlock a non-licensed character with shards, as licensed characters can only be bought with Aurora cells, it takes 9,000 shards to unlock a character. Every second in the game earns a player about one experience point, and it takes about 14 experience points to earn one shard. So if we multiply 9,000 by 14, that's one 126,000 seconds or roughly 35 hours. Realistically, this time might be slightly longer because you don't get the shards until you complete the player level. Now, to some people, 35 hours might not sound like a lot, especially over the course of like a month, but if we take the casual definition to mean somebody who plays 20 hours or less a month of a game, that means it could take someone three months to earn a new character. Now, this time can also be potentially extended if we take into account the shrine, as many perks are paywall due to being behind licensed characters, which cannot be unlocked through free currency. So if a player wants a perk on a paywalled character, they can get it through the shrine. So now we have this dilemma that a casual player then has to decide whether or not are they going to unlock a perk that they might really want or they might need for their playstyle, or are they going to keep saving for an entire character and three perks? The cost to straight buy the characters too is a little bit ridiculous, because if you were to buy the game and just the licensed DLC, that's roughly $90. If you include all the DLC, it's more than $150, and that's not even getting into the cosmetics or the rift, which comes out every three to four months. Dead by Daylight could elevate the casual player experience by easing up on this grind. Rewarding players more is a great way to engage them and keep them around. Allow players the ability to more easily unlock characters and open up playstyles. This could also ease the tension between players. If more players have the opportunity to play locked content, it could help players understand what goes into using specific characters, specific perks, and could lessen the animosity towards players who use unpopular perks. There's a couple different ways I would address the shard grind. One is by rewarding players more depending on their devotion level. Currently, it doesn't matter what your devotion is as you get the same amount of shards. So myself who's devotion four, I get the same amount of shards as somebody with either no devotion or somebody who's got 20 plus level devotion. This could encourage people to work on their devotion level as they'll know there's a reward for getting higher levels with devotion. I would also introduce shards as a reward in the rift. Currently, there are a lot of useless rewards in the rift, such as charms that are effectively the same but just come out in different colors. Right now, the rift currently has five boat charms and four letter charms, and I don't know a single person who has any interest in using them. Even taking out two of each of these charms and making that a shard payout would be much more rewarding than a charm I'm never even going to look at. This idea can even be expanded into including shards as rewards for the free tier of the rift. That way, players are still encouraged to do challenges and un unlock the rift because it gives them more fulfilling rewards. I also think it'd be really interesting to see Dead by Daylight experiment with different game modes. Give players a chance to be silly or do something outside the norm of Dead by Daylight. Not only could this be a time to reward players, but let players think about the game as more than just escape and kill. I've heard of a few different ideas for modes that I think would be amazing if Dead by Daylight could explore these different options. So many players come up with their own and it could be really encouraging seeing some of this built into the game. 
But those are just some of my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. How would you improve Dead by Daylight? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you more Dead by Daylight content. And if you want to check out my Twitch streams, I currently go live on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.